Okay, I'll call this November 20 evening meeting. Uh, to order all three commissioners and the county attorney are present. Um, first on the agenda, we've got a uh, thank you. Thank you. Hello, Michael. Uh, I'm here to introduce Chris again from Commonwealth Engineering for um, he's going to discuss the uh, Quanta water filter program for you and uh, as a resolution that we were on the second reading the last time. Uh, he's got a signed document uh, if you're ready to go tonight. So uh, Chris just Hi everyone. So last month we talked about uh, having a interlocal agreement with the town of Kiwana in the amount of $500,000. Um, with that, that is to offset the cost of uh, a bond or a band, uh, bond anticipated note. Um, we do have terms of the agreement to take effect on December 31st of 2023 and then payment to be back on June 1st of 2024. I have ran this by the town's attorney, Andrew, and then by Holly as well. They have no issues with it. Um, I don't know if commissioners have a copy of this or you'd like to review this. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I don't, I just have a computer here. Okay. And you did go to the council and everything was okay? Uh, the council is uh, scheduled for tomorrow night. Oh, tomorrow night. Yes. Okay. 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 Uh, hearing that, then uh, uh, we just have this uh, resolution. We'll just read it by title. Uh, this is our third reading. Uh, it's the interlocal agreement cooperation, the cooperate agreement regarding advance funds from the town of Kiwana. Uh, does anybody have any questions on this? Is be the third reading I've heard this far. So, you have any questions on what we're doing? Okay. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Then I entertain a motion uh, contingent upon the council funding it uh, for this $500,000 short term loan, zero interest loan to the town of Kiwana. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries for you. Thank you. I have the uh, signatory document here. Okay. Is the honor here to attest this then? Well, if you want to leave, we can have her do that in the morning. Why don't we do that in the morning? She has to see you over here tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you for your time. Tell us what they accept and what they don't accept. 
at that point. So this is where we're sitting. And just so that you understand the way that this thing was running, they're running up by the seat of their pants, so everything I just told you is subject to change. <laughs> <laughs> That's my report. <laughs> Thank you. We have the ambulance um, contract thing. We'll uh, as we deal with right now. Uh, and, uh, this is from Ritter uh, Strategic Services. Um, it's regarding medical services, the ambulance project. On Tuesday, September 5th, the commissioners published the spec <coughs> specifications for emergency medical and ambulance services for Fulton County. The request. Uh, the proposal resulted in three qualified providers submitting proposals for the project. With the assistance of commissioners, a working group consisting of community members and elected officials was established to assist uh, Ritter Strategic Services with the project. Working group members included Gail Karras, Rebecca Hartzler, Rick Randstad, Ron Dittman, Paul McKinney, Tom Butler, and Jeff Finke. The working group reviewed each proposal participated in vendor presentations that included interviews and equipment demonstrations and speaking with references. The working group met with county uh, commissioners, county council members, and other interested parties to present its findings and answer questions regarding each proposal. Uh, Ritter Strategic Services reported that the working group had eliminated one vendor from consideration during the process Two providers remaining include Heartland EMS and Luther EMS, both well qualified to provide EMS services to Fulton County. An important factor to consider in each proposal is the financial obligation asked for by the providers. The annual stipend uh, requests are Heartland EMS. Um, it's a four year contract for the, all four years, is $1.35 million. Luther, uh, 24. Uh, it was a zero dollar. 2025 is 400,000. 2026 is 420,000. And uh, 2027 is 441,000. Uh, Ritter Strategic Services requests that commissioners consider the information received throughout this project and make an informed decision to award the EMS project with one qualified of the providers. Upon the award of the EMS project to a qualified provider, Ritter Strategic Services respectfully request that commissioners approve Ritter Strategic Services to, in collaboration with legal counsel to initiate contract negotiations with the successful provider. Okay. Any discussion on anything? Um, I don't guess I do. I would like to thank the group that I worked with that he just mentioned. I think they did an excellent job. Appreciate all your hard work. I really do. Um, other than that, I do think that we need to make sure that River stays completely involved in the contract, and then even after the contract is signed, to make sure that everything's held to the proper standards. Okay. Um, I guess this, uh, from Gail. Yes, sir. From my understanding, what we're going to be voting on is uh, a service that we will uh, enter into contract negotiations with, but it is it is not the final contract at this minute. That is correct. Okay. So, that's um, exactly good thing. Do you have any questions on that? Any comment? Okay. So we have, uh, like I said, Luther and, and Hartland. Does anybody have a Recommendation that would like to recommend? Move through. Okay. Do, you will make a motion. I'll make a motion that we enter into contract <coughs> negotiations with Luther. I second it. Okay. Do we have any discussion? From anybody in the public? Any of the committee got anything they want to say or interject? I got one thing. I think it speaks volume when our whole work families here and represented by police, fire, and EMS, 9 1, coroner. 
and of course our town board's representation and the meeting with the public. Um, I, you heard from the people and when the politics get in the way and versus the people, your work family you work with, it's hard to make that decision. And so with us being, I mean, doing our due diligence, it was hard doing the negative and positive uh, between the group, I will tell you that. So this is what you got when they all show up. And that's what it is like when they work in the field, so. Anybody else? Okay. Like you said, this, this is uh, a vote to let Ritter entertain or get into the contract negotiations with Luther. This is not a, a vote approval yet until we all agree on the contract. So, any other questions from the public? Okay. All in favor of that? that motion carries three up. So, we will let Barry know and move forward to the next step. Okay. Hopefully we get on that pretty quick. Yeah. Well, I do want to thank everybody for the participation and all the hard work and the time they put into this. So, okay. Thank you. Okay, now we'll move on to department <coughs> updates. Um, start back, John Geyer, Highway Department.
watch that disappear. Um, fuel contract. Um, I see you guys can talk to you a little bit uh, about it. I uh, want to get approval from you to lock in. Uh, I talked to Ceres Solutions last week. Um, they recommend every year from December 31st this year, so Jan starting January 1 to December 31st of 2024, we always lock in fuel, and that way we know what our prices of fuel will be for the, for the upcoming year, and it doesn't fluctuate. The Sheriff's Department, everybody knows exactly what we're paying for fuel. Uh, but they recommended that we go ahead and lock it down. One, one smart bomb over in the Middle East could just really play havoc with our fuel price next year. So. Uh, there's a lull in fuel prices right now, but from January to March 31st, uh, I could lock uh, our on-road and off-road diesel for 287 5. Uh, from April 1st to December 31st, I could lock it in for 281 And then our uh, gasoline from January to July, I could lock it in for 250 And from August 1st to December 31st, I could lock it in for 230 I sent you this afternoon a couple of agreements. How did you get a chance to look at both of those? I did not. I'll give it to you here real quick. They go with my junk, so I don't know why. Side for the on call. Um, is the price the same as last year? Second. Motion carries three out. Okay. okay, John. Thank you. So the next thing I have, uh, sent you a copy of a quote. Uh, I've been talking with you <coughs> for uh, probably the last four or five months about a new backhoe. Um, the one we have now currently is a 2013, so it's 10 years old. It's got 5,600 hours on it. It's pretty well wore out. Uh, looking at trying to get a new one. So they gave me a price 
Uh, we went through source well, which we've done on other pieces of equipment, which is a uh, government bidding uh, source well. This is a government bid. That's what it is. It's the <laughs> yeah. They're the individuals that bid it out for bid the government. Yes. But anyway, the list price is 176380 Source well discount, which is 35%. Takes off 61733 um, uh, brings it down to anyway the total price would be uh, 122500 after you put in a thumb and, uh, and New Holland would give us an extra $4,500 discount uh, so 118000 is the price which I thought was actually a pretty good price compared to when we bid it at the last time five years ago, we ended up not buying one. Um, and that's not counting a trade. So uh, this would be probably about a year out before we'd see it. They said most orders are anywhere from nine to 12 months out. They could come in earlier. He said you could put the order in, you could see it in February, but most likely they're looking at October, November before you'd see it. So you'd have to go ahead and order this. Give them the okay time you got to take them. Order this one. And when it comes in, you either get a price on your back or if you don't like that price from them, you can sell it outright like an option or whatever. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, I'll just have to let me. Whether you want to do it or you want me. 
need to do it or how you want to do it. Well, you're next time we might as well just kind of work that here now. And we can, uh, you might as well go to the council. I mean, tomorrow night, just yeah. keep them all yeah. rolling. But then yeah. can, uh, My, I guess the biggest thing, I've got 13 months to yeah. figure out how to pay for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I just need to get an order at this point. Yeah. Right. I mean, the biggest thing you don't want to get out of the rotation too far. Yeah. 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 We're looking at trucks that are, that you would be, uh, uh, be pushing 14, 15 years old today. Mm -hmm. You'd be 180,000 shy if you order two of them, which is 200,000 in shy. Yeah. Yeah, the worst part of it is these trucks aren't going to get cheaper. Mm -hmm. I'd say we would have a contingent for the council and find the money. I mean, yeah. you know, talk in tomorrow night. Yeah. 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 I've got an employee that's going to be down most of the winter and I'm needing some extra help. Uh, I'm just going to ask for some part-time help. Uh, Troy Coles uh, has applied for part-time help. i pass an employee. I hope you're blessed to hire him. I mean, no problems, right? No, he was good to help. He part-time employee that I was doing. Okay. Just through the winter, which is what I need. $6,636.52 for out of county inmate housing for the month of October. Any questions on that? Say that number one more time. Uh, $61,636.52. Is that including federal or not? Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, an ordinance <coughs> has been drafted to allow public donations for the canine program. In the past years, we had funneled the canine donations received through the FOP and are dependent upon them for approval to use the money. Uh, the pro the, this will streamline the process and keep it all within the county and the sheriff's office. Um, we are accepting merit deputy positions, or I'm sorry, we are accepting merit deputy applications through December 29th, 2023. Um, Senior Deputy Matt Craig has accepted a position with Bourbon Police Department. His last day with the county is November 29th of 2023. <laughs> And we want to publicly thank him for his 15 years of service to the citizens of Fulton County and wish him the best of luck in his new position. Uh, we'll be hosting a luncheon at the Sheriff's Office November 29th at 12 o'clock and everyone's welcome to come. Um, we are still waiting on the two new Tahoes to be outfitted at Cops Gear. Um, they have assured us that that will be done by the end of the year. And we have completed interviews for the animal control position we will review and present our recommendation at the December 4th commissioner's meeting. Um, QCC, which is our medical provider, they have, uh, they provide medical bill scrubbing for offsite services for the inmates. We have been invoiced $154,687.33 so far this year. The scrubbing has reduced those changes by 89%, so from 154,000, they've taken off 138,555 dollars and 65 cents, which has left the county responsible for 16,131 dollars and 68 cents. And thank you to IT and Chad for coordinating getting a lift to the courthouse to replace the exterior camera. Any questions? 
I guess not. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>
of some sort. Um, maybe we can finalize that the first uh, of December. We can get that. So just a grant for you to move forward. On the we don't sign of the contract. Yeah, we don't know the exact number and the exact dollar amount and everything yet, right? Well, I want to make sure Travis has what he needs uh, for just on the county side. Okay. I know I want to provide uh, for the volunteer fire departments on their side. Um, and it gives one pagers too. Well, we're kind there. of, um, with the pagers, we're kind of like, we don't know, but we want to uh, look at the radios first because we just, okay. we haven't tested the pagers at all. So that might be, uh, they're around seven to $800. We might have to look at that as a, Yes. That's a whole other beast with paging. Yeah, you know, the, the price $26,273. Um, talking with uh, Kevin McSherry, he's expecting a 3 to 6% increase if we don't order by the end of the year. So that, that's. Mm -hmm. It's so going to yeah. be the same radio, it's just going to go up. It's like everything else, mm -hmm. just like these dump trucks for the highway department. So that's kind of why she's pushing the sense of urgency to by the end of the year. Yeah, so I will get those quotes to you so you have them, but they could be a, uh, slightly better with a larger number of equipment going up. We just don't have that running total. But they need to know what your buy-in would be to push it through the council and all we know the whole group for tomorrow. Sounds good. Yeah, I think we're all on board. Yeah. We're, it's got to be done. I mean, yeah. it's just... Right. Yep. So they're greatly appreciated. They were, I was going to send them an invite to come to the meeting, but I knew there was going to be a full house. And I couldn't take the hot flashes. <laughs> <laughs> so the hazard material emergency response plan, that needs to be approved by the LEPC. I don't know how many years, and Tom can agree with this as well. He's been the chair, I've been the chair, but I've never seen that come through to be approved by the LEPC then presented to you. There's three plans that need to work together. So in the last few months, we're working with IDHS, um, and there's also a mitigation plan. And I want to have that a grant ready for you because there is a grant coming from FEMA to work to update that plan and also the CE and P plan. I'm not going to read all those off to you, but all these plans work together, and it is a Bible. They're literally probably three to six inches thick, and it's going to take a long planning, but all three of these plans work together, and they need to be voted on, some of those by LEPC, and then they're presented to you for adoption and a resolution. Now, your mitigation plan, there has been a resolution on that, but I didn't see anything in their assigned agreement for your hazmat plan with our tier two groups that needs to be implemented. So that will be coming to you. Um, on December 18th, when we went down to conference, we talked about cybersecurity. So I did sign Josh and I up for the December 18th platform form for, through IDHS. That is, uh, we need to watch that. So. Um, that's all part of our grant process and moving forward uh, with numerous items. Um, any questions on those? I know it's a lot. I barely understand some of that stuff. So. <laughs> um, and then one last plan that uh, Myra and the SBR has been a little challenging, uh, but that was finally uh, submitted uh, last week. And, uh, We've been working with a couple other counties in District 2 that there seems to be a problem with that as well. But as the collaboration continues, I think all of the counties together um, for District 2 will push that and be a strong force again to its adequate and correct verbiage. One thing on the 800 system that I'll fall back on, um, I do know a lot about communications Yesterday we had an issue with the tower at 200 South and State Road 25 that is operated by HIPSIC. They run that. For redundancy, I'm going to ask them to piggyback on our 300 foot tower. And uh, it seems like every 10 to 11 months that tower site loses power and then we lose communications totally. And the interoperability intact channel uh, did not 
not work. They were up and down, so we need redundancy if the county's going to go to total eight hundred. So with your permission, I'm going to include you on that letter to the state communications. Mm -hmm. okay. Sounds good. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> And last but not least, um, we hired two folks for 911. One is a full-time, um, he is bilingual, mm -hmm. and the other one is part-time, who will work 24 hours a week. That'll come out of the 1222 funds. We do have nine uh, part-time positions, and we will have her trained and prepared if we do lose somebody to move right in. I have 75 applicants from Indeed. I'm not gonna lie, it did take me a month to go through those. And we had our second interviews last week with approximately 12 of those, and they were all very good applicants. I didn't even pass one on to Luther and EMS. Um, I wish I could have hired them all, but I still don't have that type of feasibility. And it's great help qualified people from Fulton County. So, and um, last but not least, uh, Brian, do you sit on the wage committee? Uh, just council. Just council. I know uh, the wages come uh, or are supposed to be recommended from the commissioners to council. With that being said, at the beginning of the year, because of the surrounding counties, and you might have seen the sheriff's department hiring, and when we post our salaries <laughs> and look at surrounding counties, we have to retain our longevity and our people that we invest in. So, 911 Fulton County about five years ago, we were up here, and uh, I, I usually don't have a high turnover rate, but I don't want to be the other end where I get down here and I'm uh, trying to train eight or 10 people. I, I can't afford to do that. I am 24 seven, I have to have somebody in the seat. So I don't want to speak on the other responding agencies, but I'm pretty sure you know the sheriff as well as his jail staff and why we need to come to the table. We need some kind of a goal to work towards uh, for the appropriate wages and get that uh, census from surrounding agencies of what they pay. So I will request that at the beginning of the year, uh, maybe meet with the commissioner first. Uh, Brian, if you do that with the other policy and stuff, <coughs> and then move forward to the wage committee. And probably Dave, because he sits on my boards. Do that. That's all I have. I just say you've done a great job. I know you've had some last minute curves thrown from the state. Yes. Yeah. Sitting there with you on those meetings, and it's you've done a great job, Bill. She's busy, she's busy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, then make it from soil water, yeah. Good evening. Good evening. I have this and this is updated because we got a budget to be just So um I'll give you an update. We applied for a CWI grant from Water Indiana and it was approved for part time staff. Education trailer and uh, education supplies. In our office, we are currently there's two, three of us in two rooms. So we're trying to expand to that into another room within the same building. So we'll probably have to be around. So what we're proposing, um, for one, is our budget line items, which was for rent to be continued to the next but next year's budget, if we can keep that there. Does that make sense? If we can keep that there. And then on the Fulton County appropriation, I have an appropriation contract. Soil and water conservation districts um, within this county. 
County and the other surrounding counties, they get their funds appropriated like a, a draw, like um, spring draw or fall draw instead of going through um, the auditors. Because I report to the State Board of Accounts and Christina reports to the State Board of Accounts, so we're both double reporting to the State Board of Accounts. Does that make sense? Oh, I have one for her. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, to save you guys money and time, we were wondering if we could do the same as other accounts per the um, ISDA. Um, Sandra Hopper is my district support specialist. She was unable to make it, but she will be there at the county council and she's willing to take in phone calls. I guess I'm a little so you would take it, you would take a, you said it like a spring draw on a fall draw. Six months, a six month period draw. Yeah, just over our budgeted line items because what's happening now is, say, I buy the state board, I'm just for instance, office supply, state board. I report to my board and to state board accounts that I bought that state board. And then I send it to Christina, who reimburses the district for it, and she reports the same thing to state board accounts for that state board. So we're double reporting. Double reporting. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And so that's a lot of time um, of my time spent reporting to Christina when we're doing the same job, pretty much. So the question is, would you guys be willing to just appropriate what you are you're giving us? the $6,295 for our budgeted, like our rent, office supplies. Could you guys do a draw instead of your auditor's office? If that, that money goes into your fund and then you use it in your light items of your budget, you've got it already there. Yeah, yeah. It's still going towards the same budget line items. It's just not double reported on both. I just think it's saving the county time and money and it would save us time and money. And would put you in sync with the other counties as far as what Yeah, you do. yeah. And the other counties all do this? The majority of the other majority counties do this. this, yes. It's just, we're a special district, so we have to report to state board accounts. We don't get out of it because of how we're designed. You see? I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of this is what I get all the time for my job. It's just how it goes because yeah. we're special. It's, it's a special district. It's, it's more of a council. These are blessing. Yeah, these are blessing. It's more of a council thinking. Yeah. It's it's their show. So uh, I guess I'm okay. I mean, so it, it takes it out of the hands of the yeah. It does. Yeah. It, it's yeah. just it's yeah. yeah. Just different reporting. It just right. her, her, her two draws right. here. Right. As long as it gets reported and everything, it's, it's reported. All, it's, right. it's all getting reported, yeah. yeah. It's just saving you guys time and it's saving us time. Yeah. I mean, I'm okay. Like I said, it's a council. <laughs> P. <laughs> P. Titan. <laughs> <laughs> it's a council decision, so, you know, because they deal with budgets. So, right. I mean, that would be more of their. Okay. Yeah, take the council more right. They have a. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And are you guys okay with what I haven't spent this year to be drawn on versus the next year? Well, now that's that, that's a different yeah. That's your encumbrances. Okay. So you're going to have to eat, to to roll it back over. You're going to need a contract of some sort. That you have to have it allocated. Yes. Okay. But you already have to have something. You have to have an invoice. invoice. An invoice or a contract. Yeah. Well, yeah. And that has to be, has to be spent in a way. You yes. should need a bill or an invoice for it. Okay. I'm all new to this. You're fine. So just work with me. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Oh, you're good. No, you're this is all new to me. So. Yeah. Okay. It just has to be the money. You have to have, have, have that project for have an invoice so we can appropriate the cover for next year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, great. Right. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So then, do I have your basis blessing to present to the council? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Thank you, guys. You're good. <laughs> All right. It's a continual learning. Okay.
We have resolution 2023-1120. It's a resolution of Fulton County Board of Commissioners of the County of Fulton, Indiana. <clears throat> established the meeting times for 2024. Whereas the Fulton County Commissioners have established that they will meet on the first and third Mondays of each month at 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. respectively in a commissioner's meeting room in the Fulton County office building, with the exception of when a holiday falls on the first or third Monday and other special circumstances as necessary. Whereas the Fulton County Board of Commissioners have established times as set forth under Indiana Code 36-2-2-6. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the <coughs> Fulton County Commissioners that one, Fulton County Commissioners have established that they will meet on the first and third Monday of each month at 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. respectively, and other special circumstances, and in the Commissioner's Room in the Fulton County Office Building located at 129 East 9th Street, Rochester, Indiana. Two. If there is a Monday holiday, the Fulton County Commissioners will meet on the following business day. Three, a year in meeting will be held on the last business day of the year at 9 a.m. Four, uh, if any meetings are scheduled, public notice will be given. Any questions on that? Maybe. Can I entertain a motion to approve resolution 2023-1120? So moved. Second. Okay. Motion carries. <coughs> chance to look over the travel authorization request? Yep. Any concerns, questions? Are there any motion to approve those? Yep. All right. So moved. Yep. Second. All in favor? Motion carries. We'll sign those out. Okay. okay. Uh, you guys had a chance to look at the minutes for November 3rd and mm -hmm. November 6th. Yep. Okay. And entertain a motion to approve those respectively. So moved. Second. All in favor? And motion carries. Okay. We have Had a chance to look over the claims. Any questions or concerns on the claims? Okay, we have uh, the jury pay $4,191.78. Um, the tourism claim $4,000. $74.75. Miscellaneous claims of November 20th, uh, $272,783.83. Uh, 
We have the lid distribution, $733,015.09. We have the utilities, $12,386.26. We have payroll for 1117. $294,067.40, payroll deduction of $118,609.80. We have the wheel surtax for September, $53,298.97. Transfers, you guys look those over. Any questions on those? Okay, we have a uh, transfer from the uh, circuit court. Uh, $1,206 from computer maintenance to law books. Uh, Superior court um, from uh, copier supplies and printing to contract of $1,629.96. We have a courthouse annex, $30 for trash removal to building repair. Uh, the courthouse annex, $5,000 for snow removal to utilities. That's not what it comes now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, drainage board. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. No, you're a drainage board, $167 from legal uh, published to uh, legal consultant. <clears throat> we have uh, commissioners, uh, $2,000 from exam records to Bonds, cover security, uh, security bonds. First of the year. And the surveyor, two hundred twenty-nine dollars from the tires and tube to uh, gas and oil. Uh, just to bring up the funds for the account. Pay for gas. We have the courthouse. $455 for elevator maintenance to landscaping. Courthouse annex, $1,486 from elevator maintenance to landscape. And then building. It's eight hundred dollars in building supply uh, to the cleaning services. Cleaning services funds are low. Any appropriations? Any questions? No, that's a that's a little confusing one there, but yeah, so I guess it's all right. It's a Rebecca's here to get the question. Tourism for um, $16,300 have been appropriated. Is that our additional appropriation? Is that a request? Yeah. Yes, we had submitted that back in October and it finally got publicized and is coming to you for a recommendation so we can pay out the rest. That innkeeper's tax had went up and so our budget was decreased for 23, but because of the increase of what has been brought in this year, that is our request for additional funds that are there in the account for us to pay out the remaining bills that need to be for the end of 23 and start of 24. 
$4,816 from construction, uh, appropriate to cover the cost of the sidewalk and ramp out at the museum. We did that. We signed it. We have a highway for the. Uh, yeah, we've already signed that. Yeah. Yeah. Get the $10,000 for the uh, repair building and equipment. <coughs> Yeah. Bridge report? <coughs> with good me. Okay. We have a $200 bill on top of that to uh, sign for that. We did wish to prove that. So moved. I say. All favor? Motion carries three out. Check on a document that I was supposed to get a couple of weeks ago. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Please. Yeah, that had to be reissued. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, um, okay. Anybody else hold business? Any new business? Um, P. Insurance. Wasn't, wasn't there supposed to be something for insurance tonight on, uh, for something she had working out with, I see Paula left, uh, with Brad for the insurance committee? I thought we were supposed to, but I guess not. There was, I don't think there was ever meetings that there was just an update about what, <clears throat> what was it? The well, not the wellness program. No, where, where you, one price, $35, yeah. and you can use uh, Woodlawn. <clears throat> Doctors were yeah, but I don't know that we ever decided we needed that we were going to meet. We need to, I assume. Okay, I, I didn't know why. I'm a little confused on that. Well, I guess I'm with you. <laughs> um, it was just there was like an update of what was found out, but I don't. There was nothing about a suggested okay. meeting, but okay. that seems like the next step to me. Yeah, I, I thought Brad was supposed to come. Maybe it was a council meeting. Maybe he was going to Marnie council meeting, but. <laughs> But anyhow, okay. That's, that's the only question I have. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, tonight I have uh, my talk with Phil a little bit. <laughs> and um, I know she has a request coming to the council tomorrow night. Um, it requests uh, United Ministries, I believe, is coming for some, uh, looking for some funding for their assistance program, not the food bank, it's only assistance. Outreach. Mm -hmm. Outreach. Yeah, the outreach. Mm -hmm. So I mean, they have two, they have the food bank and the outreach, the other systems. Uh, so I feel one of us to kind of bring that up and, and her and I both agree if we're going to help one, we have four, four in the county. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the request is from the United Ministries. Um, we're out of funds for rent and low income things. That's what they're yeah. after. But I don't know the amount, so I, mean, I would imagine. Yeah, no, there's no amount that's been mentioned that they're so looking for funds. I spoke with uh, Brian Johnson, had him reach out to the other, other ministries, the, the other three, and everybody is doing well. I think uh, Akron's and Bonnie Dunbar has uh, maybe a little meet coming up. And uh, so um, I suggested, I mean, to do it appropriate to their size, I mean, the United Ministries is a larger. Budget, so if they want to, it's a council decision. Um, I think they need kind of a blessing for maybe kind of, uh, I think Phil wanted to use some funds for that. Um, I don't know if our better to rate the post school might be a better spot. Uh, we'll take the next bill. I guess if we have a blessing, we'll let them do some other funds. That's, but the ARPA funds still got to come back through us if they decide to use them. Is that correct? Yeah. Right. So, 
Okay. Yep. I mean, I'm okay. We'll give, yeah, I'll give. Yeah. 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 I'm good. I mean, it's, it, it, all those ministries do a great job. I mean, they they help a lot of people. It's just it's, it's nice to know that they're all they're all fairly flush on food banks. I mean, they're all you know, so they're they're doing good. And it's it's uh, I think it goes a long way showing the support our community has for these organizations. So I mean, it's, it's really nice that we're blessed with a, a bunch of good people volunteering. And, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, we're going to give them the one we need to give yeah, them all, everything. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, uh, okay. So, yeah, that's, we're in agreement. Yeah. That okay. Um, new business from the public. Is it good? No. Okay. I'm good. You're good? Yeah. Good. <laughs> no, I will Okay. Okay. Uh, I guess I'm going to recess. So moved. Second. All fair. Motion carries clear. Okay.